Hello and welcome to the next chapter, Cognitive Compensation via Neural Recruitment. So in this chapter, to understand kind of what's going on underneath the hood, it's important to understand the technology that's being used. So before the fMRI, there wasn't an easy way to understand where brain activity was coming from, at least not in a non-invasive way. So when studying humans, it wasn't easy to know like which parts of the brain are doing what during cognitive tasks and the fMRI was able to help us with that and with the invention of the fMRI it uncovered some pretty interesting findings about age related differences between younger and older adults and probably the most surprising and interesting finding is that as the brain ages it seems to respond to age-related changes by reorganizing its physiology and function um, based on perhaps different damage in different areas and we'll get to that in just a moment and we'll talk about some of the major theories that were brought up so the two major ones are Harold and crunch and, and they're very much related so hang tight, I'll show pictures. I think that'll help very much with this. But basically what Harold is, is what's called uh, hemispheric asymmetry reduction. So it's a double negative. So basically what it means is that when you look at the brain of an older adult when doing a cognitive task, that both hemispheres are active. And when you look at a younger adult, Typically, only the left or sometimes the right hemisphere are the ones that show activation. <clears throat> so that's kind of what the Herald um, hypothesis says. And why this was so groundbreaking is before, all we were able to do was study behavior. And we always assumed that if behavior stayed about the same, then probably the brains are doing pretty much the same thing. Because, you know, that makes sense. But... In reality, this, this very much isn't true. So what does this look like? I, I think a picture always helps. So if you were to do a brain scan and you were to see, hey, which parts of the brain are using the most oxygen? So typically the parts of the brain that are receiving the most blood flow are the ones that are being used. They're active, they're burning through energy. It makes sense. So what you typically see for different cognitive tasks is younger adults, they'll use one side of their brain. Whereas for older adults, they'll use that same side, but then also recruit from the other hemisphere. And <clears throat> this is where the crunch synonym comes from. So basically for younger adults, there's very much an asymmetry in the hemispheres, meaning one of them is doing a lot of the work and the other one is just kind of laid back. Whereas for Older adults, it's far more symmetrical, meaning the left and the right hemispheres are working together. So there's a ton of different ways why um, this could happen, and I'll get into it in just a moment. But it's just important to at first note what these brain scans are showing. So these brain scans found pretty similar results across a whole bunch of different cognitive tasks, whether it be episodic memory, um, with encoding or retrieval or working memory, but then also in perception and also in cognitive control. So it's fairly wide reaching finding these results. So let's address the, the question, why do you think this is happening? So there's, there's a lot of different views on how this could be the case. <clears throat> and in this lecture, I'll, I'll make the case showing that it really does seem to be compensation that is causing this neural recruitment. So one view is that compensation counteracts age-related neurocognitive decline, meaning if there's less matter in the prefrontal cortex for older adults that they can recruit areas in the other prefrontal cortex in the other hemisphere. Another idea is that <clears throat> it's essentially just random noise that's happening. Um, this is the dedifferentiation hypothesis. And basically the idea is that it's actually not helpful having activation in these other areas. And we'll show some evidence against that. And then two other views that are related to, to this is 
One is that it's neurogenic, meaning that the changes are due to actual physical changes in the brain, which tends to kind of hold up. Um, whereas another view would say that has to do with strategy use. So if younger adults and older adults are doing qualitatively different methods to achieve their goals, it would make sense that different areas would be activated. But when you control for strategy use, meaning you tell them to do the same thing, you still find these results, which suggests that it's neurogenic, meaning that it has to do with actual physical changes in the brain. So very much related to Harold is the crunch model. And basically the only difference between Harold and the crunch model is that the crunch model, which was made by Patricia Rutter Lorenz, whereas the Harold model was Roberto Cabeza, is that it's, it's stating outright that it's compensation that's leading to bringing on additional resources in the frontal lobe. And it's just the same idea that, that basically you bring on new neural circuits to assist you along the way. And this was all just based on the unexpected and intriguing result that shows that there's age-related overactivation, which means that older adults are recruiting more areas. So when I say overactivation or you hear underactivation, it's very relative. It just means relative typically to younger adults. So relative to younger adults, older adults show greater levels of activation, specifically in the opposite hemisphere in the prefrontal cortex. So there's different studies that have slightly different results. And based on the results you get, you can have slightly different interpretations. So what's pretty common is that older adults and younger adults will show equal performance on different cognitive tasks meaning that they'll do the same with their behavior, um, showing similar levels of cognition. However, what you'll see is that there's greater activation for older adults in the contralateral prefrontal cortex, meaning on the other side, than there is for younger adults. And another um, pretty common finding too is that some studies show that older adults still do worse with greater activation, meaning that essentially that even though they're recruiting from the other hemisphere, they're still not doing quite as well as younger adults. And really there's two ways to take this in and try to understand what's happening. So one way to take this in is to think about the dedifferentiation hypothesis, which is just suggesting that the activation in the other area is simply due to randomness, due to neural noise, and that this actually isn't helpful for our behavior. In fact, it, it might hinder us, if anything. And the other account is that it's compensatory, meaning that it actually helps. So some early analysis showed that though the older adults that recruit from both hemispheres do better in general than older adults that don't, they tend to respond quicker. So that's one piece of evidence suggesting that compensation is the root of it. Another is not as direct, but it's that for individuals who have suffered stroke, that typically you find that similar regions of, of the brain on the other hemisphere take over the responsibilities that the lost area of matter took um, that was lost during the stroke. And third, and, and in my opinion, the most convincing evidence has come from TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. So basically with TMS, uh, what you can do, which is, is pretty cool, is you can turn either areas temporarily on, like you, you can make it stronger in a certain area, or you can kind of turn them off. You can slow down their signals. And what this does is it gives us a good idea of what different parts of the brain are doing. And how this was used in this context was that when older adults were showing bilateral activation, meaning their left and right prefrontal cortexes were showing activation, basically what they did was they turned off the contralateral hemisphere, so the hemisphere that was being recruited. And what they found was that that hindered older adults' performance on different tasks, which is direct evidence that that recruitment is actually helping them 
when it comes to completing their cognitive tasks. And like a good scientist, um, they did the same thing with the younger adults and they, they turned off the area on the contralateral hemisphere for younger adults that wasn't showing any activation and it didn't affect their performance. So all in all, it just suggests that recruiting from additional areas serves as a helpful function. So what's the major takeaway? What's important here? Basically, the, the most important thing here is that our brain remains flexible with age and it adapts to changes. And that although there may be age-related differences in different structures in the brain, that the brain is ready to adapt and change to deal with the tasks at hand. Thanks for watching.